Well folks, it seems North Korea is back at it again, providing us with fresh material for a segment we affectionately call, Things That Make You Go, Hmm, Seriously? This time it's not a missile launch or a nuclear test, no, they've decided to take a more explosive approach to interior design. That's right, North Korea blew up some bridges and rail lines connecting them to South Korea. Because nothing says we're serious about diplomacy like a good old-fashioned detonation, am I right? Now you might be thinking, John, bridges? Really? That's the best they could do? And to that I say, in the grand scheme of things, yeah, it could be worse. But it's still a pretty clear message, wouldn't you say? It's like when your neighbor builds a fence right down the property line except instead of a fence it's a pile of rubble and twisted metal. Of course this wasn't just a random act of demolition, it was a carefully calculated move orchestrated by none other than the supreme leader himself, Kim Jong-un. And as always, the international community is left to decipher the motives behind his latest attention-grabbing stunt. But don't worry, we're here to break it down for you, in a way that even your goldfish could understand. Probably. So, why did North Korea decide to channel their inner demolitions expert? Well, the official reason, according to North Korea, is that they were retaliating against South Korea for, wait for it, flying drones over their capital city, Pyongyang. Now, South Korea hasn't exactly confirmed or denied these drone allegations, they're playing it coy, like a poker player with a royal flush. But let's be honest, even if there were drones, blowing up bridges seems a tad extreme, doesn't it? It's like setting your house on fire because you found an ant in the kitchen. But here's the thing. Experts believe there's more to this story than meets the eye. They say this bridge-blowing extravaganza is really about two things, internal power struggles and Kim Jong-un's burning desire to be taken seriously on the world stage. See, by creating a common enemy, in this case, South Korea, Kim Jong-un can rally his people behind him and distract them from, you know, the whole lack of basic human rights thing. And by acting out in increasingly provocative ways, he's basically saying to the international community, hey, pay attention to me, I'm important. Now you might be wondering how South Korea is reacting to all of this. Are they building their own catapults, training attack pigeons? The answer, my friends, is far less exciting. South Korea, ever the picture of restraint, has basically responded with a collective sigh and a, uh, here we go again. They've increased their military alert level, fired off a few warning shots near the border, you know, just to say, we see you, and condemned North Korea's actions in the strongest possible diplomatic language. But here's the thing about South Korea. They've been dealing with their northern neighbor's antics for decades. They're basically the world's most patient sibling, constantly cleaning up the messes and trying to maintain some semblance of normalcy. Despite North Korea's provocations, South Korea remains committed to peace and stability in the region. They're like the designated driver of the Korean peninsula, trying to steer things in the right direction while their friend in the passenger seat yells at other cars and throws empty soju bottles out the window. Section 4, Deja Vu Destruction, A History of North Korea's Temper Tantrums This isn't the first time North Korea has resorted to demolition therapy to make a point. They've got a bit of a reputation for it, actually. It's like their go-to move when they're feeling misunderstood or just plain cranky. Remember that time in 2020 when they blew up a liaison office after South Korean activists sent leaflets across the border? Yeah, that happened. Or how about in 2018 when they demolished tunnels at a nuclear test site just to add some dramatic flair to their talks with the United States? Classic North Korea. You see, destruction is a key part of the Kim family playbook. It's their way of saying, we're here, we're unpredictable, and we'll blow up anything that gets in our way. It's not exactly the most mature approach to international relations, but hey, who are we to judge? Section 5, The Bigger Picture, Global Eye Rolls and Whispers of Here We Go Again. Now I know what you're thinking. John, this is all very entertaining, but what does it actually mean for the rest of the world? And that's a fair question. The truth is, North Korea's actions, while often absurd, do have real-world consequences. They destabilize the region, escalate tensions, and make it that much harder to find a peaceful solution to the whole North Korea having nuclear weapons problem. The international community is watching this latest episode of As the Hermit Kingdom Turns with a mixture of exasperation and concern. Because while blowing up bridges might seem like a relatively harmless way for Kim Jong-un to let off some steam, it's a stark reminder that the situation on the Korean peninsula remains volatile and unpredictable. 
Section 6. Can we just build a bridge and get over it? A glimmer of hope? So, is there any hope for peace and reconciliation on the Korean Peninsula? Or are we all just doomed to watch as North Korea continues its reign of demolition and diplomatic dysfunction? Well, it's a complicated situation, with no easy answers. But even in the darkest of times, there's always a glimmer of hope. Maybe just maybe someday, North and South Korea will find a way to build bridges instead of blowing them up. We can dream, can't we? Until then, we'll be here, providing you with the news, the analysis, and the occasional dose of humor to help you make sense of it all. Stay tuned, folks.